steroids really aren't a problem in our school or on my team. The person I hide my steroid use from the most is my coach. The last thing I want is to get kicked off the team, but I'd say half of my teammates are using, or at least thinking about using, steroids. That's one worry I don't have. I have girls and they don't play sports. Steroids aren't just about getting strong or playing sports. It has everything to do with improving my appearance. I'll do whatever I need to do to look better. We're not talking about alcohol or hard drugs here. Where is my kid going to get steroids? It's not like there are drug dealers in our neighborhood. I bought my steroids on the internet and it wasn't long before I had lots of friends I was getting them for. I just don't believe it's that big of a problem. I can guarantee our children have never met anyone that has used steroids. I know practically everyone on the football team is using them. I hear about it all the time. I also know some girls that are using. It's really common. And I believed every one of those things. Right up until the time that we confirmed that my 16-year-old son, Taylor, was doing anabolic steroids. That was about six weeks before he died. The concern about steroid use is not limited to pro athletes. The social problem exists among everyday people, and most of them, kids. The national discussion about steroids and performance-enhancing drugs and their impact on young people is really just beginning to emerge. For years, almost every news story about these drugs focused on their use by elite or professional athletes. And each time the headlines screamed about the fall from grace by another one of our sports superheroes, the public learned two important lessons. Using steroids is cheating, and using steroids works. The negative health effects are rarely, if ever, highlighted. We're just a typical American middle-class family. Taylor wanted to be like his big brother, who went on to play Division I ball. As we now know what happened, followed the lead of some of the other boys on the baseball team and began injecting himself with anabolic steroids. Seven months after he started taking steroids, he died. Kids are trying to be so great, and, and, and the competition is so great at, at a young age nowadays that uh, I think a lot of kids, and, and even a lot of parents sometimes, will try to force stuff on the kids that will just get them bigger and faster and stronger. The truth is that about a million young people have admitted using steroids and other appearance and performance enhancing drugs. And they are not just being used by young athletes to improve their performance. Steroids have become the drug of choice for young people eager to achieve the perfect bodies they see glorified in the media. In today's world, the steroid um, drugs have really taken over on the non-athletes. At that time, it was all performance based. And today, it's all about body image. When you're young, image is, is very important. No one wants to be the skinny rail basketball player, the skinny rail kicker. Once they start to really look good, if I look good, I feel good. Most people are surprised to learn that the fastest growing group of steroid users is young girls, beginning as early as the eighth and ninth grades. But equally disturbing is that many people don't understand that steroid use can be a serious threat to their children and their community. And they can't comprehend how young people would even be able to get these powerful drugs. They don't want to believe that it's actually happening. You know, everybody thinks that it's not going to happen to my kid. Well, Don Sr. probably thought it would never happen to his kid either. No, they're in denial. I think these schools are in denial. Um, you know, I think it's very prevalent. Kids can access, you know, these drugs and these steroids and these amphetamines and, you know, very easily. You know, I got started by, you know, one, wanting to get bigger and play football, but two, you know, making two phone calls and being able to get pretty much whatever I wanted. It's easily attainable. You order it off the internet, use a credit card, and two weeks later it's in a box in your mailbox. I think that everybody underestimates the power of their kids and I think that most kids when they want something they're going to be able to find it. The truth is what they're purchasing and putting into their bodies is garbage. It's contaminated with all kinds of other stuff, with lead mercury, zinc, tin, or arsenic. 
And sometimes, even when family members, coaches, or educators are confronted with the discovery that a young person is using steroids, they are initially relieved that it's only steroids because they just don't know the dangers associated with these powerful drugs. I'm going through his closet and there was a vial and three syringes. Well, I thought he was on heroin. So I called the pharmacist and I read, I said, I need to read this vial to you and you need to tell me what it is. The pharmacist said, it's an anabolic steroid. Well, to be honest with you, I was relieved at first. I knew my brother was using steroids. As a big brother, I didn't know to tell him they were bad. I didn't know. If, if I take myself back, I had no knowledge of any of the severe internal damage or, or psychological damage it can do to a person, let alone a teenager. So I was 100% unaware. Drug addiction and steroid use to me are the, the, the same thing. They, they do productive things in our perception. They give me big muscles. People recognize me. They make me feel euphoric. They make me feel good. You know, it's interesting. I use, obviously, steroids in my medical practice. I tell patients, you're gonna, one of four things is going to happen to you. You're going to be happy, mad, glad, or sad. You're, you're using testosterone at a time. In some athletes, when their body is producing this amount they've never had before, and in a young athlete, we always focus a lot on the physical, uh, the acne, the, the breast growth, the gonadal uh, loss. But what, what has hit me is what it does to their psyche. And yet you're throwing in something that we know creates aggressive behavior. You know, it creates the perfect storm in terms of uh, dealing with, a, uh, with an adolescent athlete. Steroids are dangerous drugs. They are easily obtainable, and young people, both in and out of athletics, are using them in ever-increasing numbers. For the past several years, the Taylor Hooten Foundation and its partner, Major League Baseball, have worked hard to raise America's understanding of this growing epidemic but there is still a lot of hard work to be done tearing down the walls of secrecy and resistance that have been built by years of denial. It's important to communicate to kids in this country to, about the, the, the horrible, horrible things that, that, that drugs do to them. And I can't think of a more effective way to do it than to the Hooten Foundation. I definitely do wish that they would, you know, talk to them a little bit more in school about it, where they would have an idea and realize how performance-enhancing drugs can really hurt you. Uh, can have serious side effects, could cause problems with you. Uh, I definitely think it'd be important to try to, to reach out to these young people, you know, at a younger age. When I call schools, whether it's a superintendent, a principal, one of the administrators, athletic directors, tell me that they don't have a problem. The first thing that comes to my mind is, how do you know? We thought we didn't have a steroid problem. The coach on Taylor's team, who was a good man, swore that he didn't have a steroid problem on his team. Half of the boys on the team were doing anabolic steroids. That's why every school, every school administrator, every parent needs to understand the problems associated with performance enhancing drugs. You need to know the warning signs. You need to know the consequences. The Taylor Hooten Foundation has some great programs to help parents, coaches, administrators, and young people understand the severity of this problem. Their website is full of great information and it's designed to both educate and prevent. All an organization has to do is pick up the phone and call. Uh, I didn't know the, the Taylor Hooten Foundation existed. There's very little education, um, very little happening in Canada. Um, had I known, I would have engaged them. Now I know. And if you're watching this, you know too. And you, it's your obligation to make sure that you provide the best education um, about this issue to your student athletes and your coaching staff and your trainers. We are here to serve our students and uh, if we don't address this, if we think it's not a problem, then you're part of the problem. The Taylor Hooten Foundation has developed a series of education programs designed to fit your needs. To find out how you can bring this life-saving message to your community or to make a donation to the work of the Taylor Hooten Foundation, contact the Taylor Hooten Foundation at www.taylorhooten.org